From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? Welcome to the last edition of Weird Science Wednesdays for this school year. For this season finale episode, we're going to focus on something fun that you can do at home over the summer. The science of kites. The exact date and origin of the kite is not known, but it's believed that they were flown in China more than 2,000 years ago. One legend suggests that when a Chinese farmer tied a string to his hat to keep it from blowing away in the strong wind, the first kite was born. The earliest written account of kite flying was about 200 BC when the Chinese general Han Sen of the Han Dynasty flew a kite over the walls of a city he was attacking. He did this to measure how far his army would have to tunnel to reach past the defenses. Knowing this distance, his troops reached inside the city, surprised their enemy, and were victorious. Kite flying was eventually spread by traders from China to Korea and across Asia to India. Each area developed a distinctive style of kite and cultural purpose for flying them. The materials you'll need to make a kite are newspaper, wooden sticks, you can also use branches from trees, tape, string, and plastic. Grocery bags work perfectly. Part of the, kites, the kite is the frame, the kite covering, the tail, and the tail and the bridle on the line. Tape the two sticks together like a cross. Lay out the newspaper and tape two together if it's not big enough. Tape the cross to the newspaper and tie a string to each point of the diamond shape. With scissors, safely cut out the perimeter of the diamond, leaving about a one inch distance. To attach the cross to the paper and to keep the paper from ripping, tape and fold the tape around the edges of the paper. Hey, thanks guys. The next step is to poke a hole through the center and at each apex. Apex are the points of the diamond. So pull the string through the holes and tie them to the cross frame. Tie a very long string to the bridle string and as a last step, connect the tail. A good rule is the tail should be at least five times the height of the kite. The four forces of flight, lift, weight, drag, and thrust, affect kites in the same way they affect airplanes and anything else that flies. Lift is the upward force that pushes kite into the air. Lift is generated by differences in air pressure, which are created by air in motion over the body of the kite. Kites are shaped and angled so that the air moving over the top moves faster than the air moving over the bottom. Weight is the downward force generated by gravitational attraction of the earth on the kite. The force of weight pulls the kite towards the center of the earth. Thrust is the forward force that propels a kite in the direction of motion. An airplane generates thrust with its engines, but a kite must rely on the tension from the string and move air created by wind or the forward motion of the kite flyer to generate thrust. Drag is the backward force that acts opposite to the direction of motion. Drag is caused by the difference in air pressure between the front and the back of the kite and the friction of the air moving over the surface of the kite. To launch a kite into the air, the force of lift must be greater than the force of weight. To keep a kite flying steady, the four forces must be in balance. Lift must be equal to weight and thrust must be equal to drag. Understanding the scientific principles of force and motion, lift and thrust, our royal kites were able to soar high in the sky. This is just another example of what you can do when you understand the science of things. I hope you enjoyed this year of science from the Learning Lab. We did a lot of fun and exciting experiments, experiments using common items that you can do at home. Remember that science is everywhere, but the Learning Lab is now also on YouTube. I'll be updating the channel this summer with new episodes, so subscribe and try them yourself.
This summer, make sure you go outside and do something memorable. Humans are also solar powered. Go be active, go outside, go fishing, go to the park, walk around your neighborhood, go fly a kite. Make the most of your summer. You only have but a handful left. Buenos días, estudiantes de Riverview. Aquí sus maestros de la escuela de Riverview les deseamos un verano maravilloso. Esperamos que salgan a jugar, que lean un libro y que disfruten su verano. Esperamos verlos en el otoño. Uh, los queremos mucho. Hey kids, what you should do this summer is actually go outside, not sit inside on your iPad, like Mr. Bee's using to take this video.